Welcome back to winter day 23 of the Stardew Valley min max and 100% perfection guide. Last time we selected the danger in the deep quest from the golden walnut room and today we will be taking on that challenge and attempting to make it as far as we can in a single day. Before we head to the mines though, we must take care of our farm chores, then give Leia a gift for her birthday, and also cycle our crab pots at the beach. We will skip over putting away all the items from last time as well as grabbing everything we need to bring with us today. We did not have any other farm chores today because we want to have as much time as possible in the mines for the danger in the deep quest, especially because today happens to be a super luck day. We will be heading straight for Leia's cottage to give her a birthday gift, and it might seem a bit early in the morning to be able to enter her house. I forget what time it opens, but we do have the key to the town so we can enter at any time we want. And you might also wonder, we only have one heart with Leia, usually we need two hearts to enter her cottage, but the key to the town also bypasses that rule, and we're able to enter anybody's house at any time with any friendship level. So we do give her a birthday gift and iridium quality goat cheese, which is loved, and that gets us at four hearts with her. So pretty good for one single gift, three hearts right there. And then after that, we will warp to the beach, and even this short distance right here, of course I'll play my horse flute as it does save some in-game time. And then we'll harvest and bait all of our crab pots here. Unfortunately, this last harvest did not get us a crab or lobster, which are the last two fish we need for the catching every fish. After that, we will head straight to the mines to get a very early start. I do use a mountain warp totem, which I don't use very often, but this does put us quite close to the mines, and we just use the horse flute to get there even faster now. We do want as much time as possible in the mines today since it is a super luck day and I brought two magic rock candies although I'm thinking I might just use one of them to save two for another time. But anyways we arrive at the mines, we drop off our stuff that we don't need to bring down with us, we use that handy storage chest I have right there that we can just access from going up the elevator and we head to floor 11. We did get the first 10 floors last time as a nice head start since we had time left in the day and today we are going to be taking full advantage of our new rings that we got last time. Anytime I slay a monster I want my monster slaying rings on which includes the burglars, hot java, napalm, and savage rings. And then when I want increased luck of course I'll put my combined iridium band plus luck rings on and they're also useful for item pickup range when we want to pick up a bunch of items as well as floor 30 through 40 which are dark floors and the glow band combination with the iridium band helps a lot for those floors which we'll see a bit later. We're off to a pretty good start here, the long horizontal floor always takes a bit to go across it but I'm looking to use not a whole lot of crafted staircases, I'll only use them on very annoying floors that really should use a staircase and of course monster floors that would take forever to clear. This floor right here is a good example of one that would probably be good to skip since the rocks are very spread apart and there are a few enemies that I would have to slay to get an increased chance of getting a ladder down but we do end up trying to go around and slay the enemies and the one good thing is we do get a speed boost every time we slay the enemy so going from enemy to enemy is a lot faster than it was before. And you will notice, as always, I am taking full advantage of pausing and assessing the situation of the floor. I do see that a bomb in the middle could blow up quite a few rocks at once, so I go for it, and we do get a ladder down so we can head down there. I do see a radioactive ore node on this floor, so I am going to go over for that. There is a few rocks near it that we can blow up along with it, but there are also some enemies that we might be able to blow up and get a napalm ring explosion. And I do think it's always a good idea to try to blow up the ores, especially radioactive ore, than to mine it because it does take quite a few hits to mine manually. Unfortunately, we couldn't line up an enemy over the radioactive ore node, but we can place down a bomb, which will cover some other rocks, so hopefully this bomb will get us a ladder down, and it does. And it turns out one of the rocks was actually a rock crab, so we can go ahead and smash attack, spam click the left button to slay it very quick, 
and when there's an enemy just lying around that I can easily slay like that, I will go ahead and slay it to get that plus two speed boost, which makes going to the next floor even faster, and when I get on the next floor, heading to the next target even faster. You will notice we are encountering some squid-like enemies that are similar to the ghosts, but they kind of stay in one place and then move kind of in a segmented way, and they are kind of annoying. They do have quite a bit of health, so slaying them isn't as easy as some other enemies like the bugs. The bugs are very nice because they're almost an instant slay with the hammer smash attack, and it's basically just like a speed boost pickup with the savage ring, which is very nice. Right here, while I lay down the bomb, I'm gonna go slay some enemies. I do think when you're laying down a bomb, it's always good to do something else, like mine ores, pick up the cave forgeables, slay enemies, and we do get a ladder from slaying the enemies, so that's always nice. We will head down that ladder, eat some cave carrots first, because we are doing a bit low on health, so we need to make sure that stays up there because some of these enemies can deal a lot of damage. The first 40 floors aren't all that bad, but once we get to floor 70 and beyond especially, they can get pretty deadly. We are able to uncover a ladder from this bomb right here, and I see a ladder right away on this floor, but there is a radioactive ore. I do think I do try to go for the radioactive ore here, but I accidentally misclick and go down the ladder, which is okay, but we are now met with the spiral floor, and usually I want to skip these floors, but I see an enemy and some crates over there, so I figure I'll give them a shot. I can try to slay the slime really fast, have it explode a few rocks, and see if I get a ladder. And I do actually get really lucky here and get a ladder, which allows me to save a staircase. I also would like to pick up the coral since they are needed in beach warp totems and we're doing a little bit low on corals, so that'll be nice to have some extra of. You will notice here my inventory is very full. We just passed floor 20. I probably should have dropped some of my stuff off at the chest up by the elevator but we're already now on floor 21, so we have to at least keep going until floor 25. On this floor, I do notice a ladder, but I am going to try to slay this squid along the way, although I do realize that the squids have a bit too much health, so I probably just will ignore them instead. On this floor, we do see a radioactive ore node along with a bunch of rocks near it, so we can go ahead and try to blow that up. I could also try to line up the squid over it, but again, the squids just have a lot of health, so they aren't very dependable for using the napalm ring with. It looks like we did get a ladder from that bomb, so I will equip my luck rings to have an increased luck when going into the next floor, and we do get a radioactive ore node here, so I will just manually mine it since there aren't a whole lot of rocks nearby. This right here is a nice place to place a bomb since there is a whole bunch of rocks that we can blow up all at once and we do get a ladder so we'll go ahead and head down we make it to floor 25 which is an elevator floor so we'll go ahead and dump some of our items here i still have five more of the ocean themed floors, so we might get more things like the clams and the coral but that's okay we had a full inventory so we should drop some of that stuff off real quick it doesn't take much time since sitting in the chest and the elevator doesn't take any actual in-game time on this floor here we do get a ladder from the enemy explosion and then this area is overrun with monsters so we'll definitely skip this floor it would take way too long to try to clear it all up that floor we got a free ladder so of course we just went down right away we will skip this floor since it is very large with narrow hallways the same thing with this one we can't can't see much of it so we will go ahead and skip it we can move down first a little bit and slay this bug since the bug slays pretty much instantly and we do actually get lucky there with a staircase so sometimes it is good to go for weaker enemies like the bugs that will just slay in one hit because we sometimes can get lucky with the staircase right down we have now made it to floor 30 and similar to the normal mind these floors are the dark floors and probably the most annoying floors because the floors are so dark that we can't really see what's going on unless we have the glow rings on. So I will go ahead and put on my iridium band since they do combine the effects of the glow ring, magnet ring, and a 10% damage ring. And you'll notice we'll be able to see a lot more of what's going on. The torches that are already on the floors are nice, but having both of the iridium bands on does help. It does make quite a good glow radius. So. I do think they're almost necessary because if we don't have them on we might miss a ladder down and if there's already a ladder spawned on the floor there's going to be a much less of a chance of us getting another one 
So we do need to have those on for these floors up until floor 40. And then after floor 40, it goes to the frozen floor. So we'll be good after that. We make it down to the star-shaped floor, so we will lay a bomb in the middle, and it will be able to blow up most of the rocks. We also had a cherry bomb for that radioactive ore node in the corner there, and we were able to blow that up. This right here is a quarry floor, and these floors are probably good to skip, but we did get lucky by slaying that slime and getting a ladder there. You will notice I am trying to slay ghosts more than I usually would. Usually they take quite a long time to slay since they get knocked back so much and we just have to wait for them to come back to us in order to actually hit them again. But we do have the wizard special orders quest for a curious substance, which we need a ectoplasm, which has a 9.5% chance to be dropped by any ghost. So that does include these ghosts, of course, so I will try to go for them. And it looks like we are met with another quarry floor, but the skulls right here don't take too long to slay, so I do go for them. And then we do get lucky with a ladder spawn. On this floor right here, there is a coal car which is filled, so that's very nice. And of course, a radioactive ore note, so we will try to blow up that. There are a few bugs we can slay to get a speed bonus, so let's go ahead and put on our slaying rings, slay those bugs, and then head on down and unfortunately I think I forgot that coal cart but I was in such a rush to go down that I guess it just slipped from my mind and that's okay we're on floor 39 the last of the dark floors and it'll be nice to get a new variety of floors so let's see if we can get a ladder from these rocks right here this floor is a rather more annoying one but that's okay we did get a ladder make it down we will go back up to our chest put some stuff away, and then we can get started with these jungle-themed floors. This type of floor is definitely my favorite, not only because of the theming, I think the theming is pretty cool with the greens, you usually don't see that in mines very often, but the mushroom enemies are basically the dust sprites, except they spawn in a lot higher quantities, it seems. They drop coal just like dust sprites do, and they also are slayed very easily, or have very low health in other words, just like dust sprites. So we can just use our smash attack and usually slay them in just that one smash, and then get the speed bonus, get the napalm ring explosion, and all of those good drops, especially the coal. The coal is very nice, and this is probably the best way to farm coal without buying it from Clint, although Clint does sell it for pretty cheap right now. We should probably spend some money on coal from Clint before the end of year two, because once year two starts, he'll increase his price on coal and ores, and we definitely don't want to buy it from him then. You'll notice the time is now 3.30 p.m., and if we just want to use one magic rock candy in the day, the latest we should use it is 4.40 p.m., but I think I will go ahead and use it now just to have some good luck for these jungle floors. And especially when we get to those frozen floors, I do think those frozen floors from 70 to 80 are some of the most lethal floors with those upgraded skeletons, but we'll see those a bit later for now. The good luck will just help with some more radioactive ore chances and getting some better loot. I do believe, however, having increased luck will make there be less enemies, which might be a bit unfortunate for my strategy here since we are relying on the enemies in order to get the speed buff and explosion from the napalm ring so arguably maybe the magic rock candy wasn't the best thing although it does help with the radioactive ore and i do want a bunch of radioactive ore so it's probably good for that although i am glad i didn't use two today i definitely think the magic rock candies are better spent at skull cavern for making money with all the increased iridium ore we can get from it. We are almost through the first 10 jungle floors here. As you can see on this floor, we are having very bad luck. It could be good to craft a staircase, but I do see some iron there that'll blow up, and we do get lucky with a ladder there. And then this floor right here should be no problem with blowing up all those grubs, and then we do make it to floor 50. We will take a trip to drop some of our items off and then start on floor 50. You'll notice right away that these jungle floors are a bit darker and have the nice fog overlay and some tougher enemies as well, most notably the putrid ghost. And you'll see us deal with this putrid ghost in a second. It comes flying at me 
gives me that nausea debuff, but we do have a very nice defense against this, and it's just simply ginger. What we can do is eat the ginger, and the nausea debuff goes away, and what that nausea debuff does, and why we definitely want it to go away, is we cannot use any healing items while we have the debuff. So it's definitely good to bring some ginger with, and the ginger doesn't override our food buff or anything, so it is always safe to eat. Another new enemy to these parts of the mines are the spiders, and unlike the putrid ghost which replaces the ghost, and the mushrooms which replaces the dust sprites, the spiders are kind of their own unique thing. They are sort of similar to the mushrooms, but the spiders jump around, and when they jump, they jump for a lot longer, and when they are jumping, you cannot actually hit them. You have to wait for them to land back on the ground. So they are a bit difficult to deal with in that regard. And I do think they have a little bit more health than the mushrooms, although they don't have too much health. So when they do land on the ground, if you use a smash attack, you should be able to slay them in one go. You'll also notice on these jungle floors that there are logs you can chop with an axe to get hardwood. Although I forgot my axe, but that's alright, not that big of a deal. On this floor right here, we just sweep through it right away by smashing our hammer at the dust sprites. On this floor, it looks like we can do the same. Just look at all those dust sprites. It is one of the most satisfying things to do to just have a good hammer smash attack and hear all of the monster slays and get a ton of items from them just like that. Of course, from all of those enemies, we did get a ladder, so we'll go ahead and head on down. And this floor looks very lucky. There are three radioactive ore nodes, so we will go ahead and stop for those. We can go ahead and bomb to cover two of them. And while that bomb goes off, we can just go ahead and mine this one right here. There's also a putrid ghost, so we will go ahead and try to slay that. Although, I didn't realize just how much health these guys had. The ghost does get knocked away, and I try to shoot it with my slingshot, although I don't know if I actually did any damage there. These ghosts are just very annoying because of all of their health they have, paired with the fact that they get knocked back so far away. So anyway, under normal circumstances, I definitely recommend ignoring these ghosts and just continuing downward. They don't drop anything too important, except for us here, we have the ectoplasm quest, so we do need to get that eventually, so I might as well just go ahead and slay it, and unfortunately, we don't get lucky there, so we will just go ahead and continue downwards. Another thing you can notice along with the logs is there are actually mahogany trees and sometimes the hardwood stumps that appear down here. So bringing an axe is actually a pretty decent idea if you are low on hardwood. You can get quite a bit of hardwood from these floors of the mines down here, which is very nice. Although it probably would be a lot more quicker and efficient to get hardwood just from farming a bunch of mahogany trees using tree fertilizer, although that is a lot more resource expensive. And down here in the mines, the mahogany trees just appear for free, no seed needed or anything. So that's one very nice thing about them, and probably another reason that I really like the jungle floors here in the mines. Something you may notice is I am definitely pausing a whole lot more than I have in my previous videos. This may be part due to the fact that I am live streaming this gameplay, and need a bit more time to think, but I try to cut out any very long pauses in my inventory, which is also why you may notice some random items moved around at times and whatnot, but I think after watching all of my previous videos and having a bit more min-max knowledge now, I know that in-game pausing is the most essential strategy for saving in-game time. And this is really just to assess whatever game situation we are in and act the best way possible to save the most amount of time. So for the mines here, every time we enter a new floor, I will pause the game and be able to see a good portion of the map and come up with a game plan accordingly. For instance, if I see a ladder, I may head straight for it, or maybe if there is an ore node, I will go for that or even try to slay some enemies. But anyway, we are almost through the jungle floors here. I skipped that floor as it wasn't a very desirable floor, but this floor right here, there are some enemies and a radioactive ore node, so we will of course go for that. And it looks like there was a 
ladder already spawned, so that's very convenient. We can go back up and organize our chest. We will also grab anything we want to pass out with because we are getting towards the end of this day. But this does lead us to a new set of floors, floor 70 through 80, which are the frozen skeleton themed floors. And these skeletons here can be quite deadly. The skulls aren't too bad. The skulls do get slayed in a few hits and are nice to use for the napalm ring explosion and savage ring boost but the skeletons and especially the skeleton mage deal quite a bit of damage so we do have to keep an eye on our health and if we do get hurt we should heal right away but often we are able to just avoid them like we can here and just head down the ladder and we do find another radioactive ore node so let's go ahead and mine that we probably should have used a bomb to try to get a ladder down with it, but I went ahead and just mined it. We will try to slay this skeleton right here, so let's equip our monster slaying rings. And it did go down pretty quickly, so it seems like the skeletons don't have a whole lot of health, but they do deal quite a bit of damage. So we should be pretty safe if we try to use our smash attack and slay the enemies right away on these floors. but. We are left with a barren floor here now, so I will try to get a ladder from blowing up some rocks. And still no ladder, so I am going to just use a staircase here because we could just keep getting unlucky. And this brings us to floor 75, halfway through the frozen floors already. And on this floor right here, I see all of the enemies and rocks to blow up, so I go right for that. And I don't even notice that there is a ladder already spawned on this floor. See if you can find it for yourself. It's actually very well hidden behind a skeleton mage over to the right. So I do notice it eventually and then go for it. Before heading down, we can do a smash attack on these skeletons to slay them all at once. We get two bone swords, which aren't very useful, so I'm just going to trash them, but kind of cool. Anyway, we head down and you will notice there is a good amount of iron ore on these floors. We will ignore them for the most part since our main goal is to just get down quickly. I did get some cherry bombs earlier, so I will try to utilize those since we already have them. Mine the radioactive ore here, and then head on down to the final floor of the frozen floors, which is 79, which is the long vertical floor. It looks like there is a good chunk of rocks here, and we do get a ladder from it. And we will head back up one more time to organize our stuff before ending the day. This probably will be the last set of floors we can get through. Floor 85 we should be able to do, and hopefully floor 90. We do want to make it to a multiple of 5 since those are the elevator floors and that's basically our checkpoints that we can go back to. So our goal is to go for floor 90. Let's try to knock out 10 of these new type of floors which are the lava mushroom floors here. And the enemies here are pretty much the same to the regular mine counterparts, except they deal more damage and have more health. And honestly, I find these last 40 floors actually quite easy compared to the jungle and ice floors. I think those middle 40 floors are actually a bit tougher than these floors for some reason. It's probably due to the putrid ghost and the spiders for those jungle floors, and then the skeleton mages, which do quite a bit of damage on the ice floors but these floors aren't really too bad. There are the void snipers with the crossbows there that can be somewhat of a threat, but usually we can just avoid them and be fine. For now, we'll just keep trying to get down quickly and we should make it to floor 90 and get the elevator checkpoint there without any issue. If we do have some time left in the day after that, we will just continue downward to slay some enemies and gather resources but that will bring us to the end of this day and the end of this video. Next time, we will finish the danger in the deep quest and make it all the way to floor 120, but at the same time, we will need to take care of a wide assortment of tasks around the farm and map, so it will be interesting trying to accomplish everything in a short amount of in-game time to leave plenty of time for the mind. If you are looking forward to that and what else is to come, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see the videos when they come out. I will also plan to stream the rest of the Danger in the Deep quest sometime soon, so 
keep an eye out for that if you are interested. After that, I might just grind out the rest of winter off stream and make the videos for that and then pick up streaming again for year two, just because there will be so, so much planning for the end of winter and going into year two, but we shall see. And feel free to leave a comment with anything you'd like to share, perhaps any tips and tricks you have for the danger in the deep quest. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching and good bye.